Hi guys, happy Monday. How are we doing? Did the weekend go by too fast? Mine certainly did. Oh, you guys are a little rocky. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, how we doing? It's Monday. It's Monday again. Like, it feels like it was just Monday a minute ago. But here we are, Monday again. Hi, Holly. Hi, Kelly and Nori. So good to see you guys. How's everybody doing? You guys have a good weekend. Hey, Kathy. So, you guys, I'm tired. <laughs> Monday hit me hard. Can you tell? I, I, my, my energy level is not the same as it normally is. It's been a very long day. Um, but that does not take away from the fun project that we have for tonight and these gorgeous beads, you guys. Oh my goodness. So last week on Sarah Ellis Designs on Friday, we used the Brave Lion mix. If you guys didn't see that video, um, when we are done here, if you didn't see that live, definitely go back and watch that one. You can actually get to it from the Jesse James Speeds blog. That necklace was amazing. It's hanging right here, actually. Let me grab it and show it to you. So this is what I did on Friday with the strand and the mix. Oh yes, so good, so, so good. The colors, I just cannot, I can't stop looking at it. I love it, so I had it, I had it hanging right here so that I could, guys, comments are gone again. I had it hanging right here so that I could, um, so that I could look at it and draw some inspiration from it because it's just so darn pretty. Um, Somebody give me a hey out there, would ya? I'm not getting any, I don't know what is what is up with Facebook, you guys. Sometimes I get the comments and other times I don't. So I'm gonna pull it up over here on the laptop. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, while I'm pulling it up, I just wanted to uh, kind of talk about the School of Magic beads some more because they are so darn pretty. And we used the um, the Brave Lion last week, and so I thought this week would be cool to use the um, the Wise Raven. I believe that's the name of it. <laughs> Sorry, so my my computer's taking a second here. I don't understand why I don't have comments. Because I know you guys are there, right? I'm doing that whole swiping thing that I normally fixes it but doesn't seem to be fixing it tonight. I don't know why. Oh, there's Patty. Patty says, hi. I got you, Patty. Hooray. Comments are here. <laughs> okay, good. Now I don't have to worry about like looking back and forth. It's so confusing to have to do it that way. Okay, so tonight we're using some more of the beads from the School of Magic. We're using the Wise Raven. Um, and you guys, this one is the blue. Mm -hmm. Check out this strand. Oh, so, so, so pretty. I had such a hard time picking out what my favorite was from this whole collection. And I kind of feel like there is just something about every single one of them that I like. So there's not, it's, I, I don't think I can pick a winner. Like I'm definitely green, like green and the whole Slytherin house and the snake. That's, that's definitely my magic house. But I'm always drawn to blue. I make a ton of blue jewelry and I feel like you guys do too. Like blue is such an easy color to work with. Um, and I actually am working with the yellow on my desk for Thursday. So kind of covering all the bases. I can see you now, Ramona. Can you see me now? <laughs> I'm so glad to. So this is a strand. We're actually not going to be using the strand, but I wanted to show it to you just so that you could see it and ooh and ah over it because we're going to use the mix for our project for tonight. Um, I will give you another close up, of course, of this strand before we get started. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, um, you know, wanted to talk about those beads a little bit more because they're so darn pretty. And I feel like this is such the perfect time of year for that collection to, to drop because it's not quite a Halloween type situation, right? I don't really equate the inspiration for this collection, which is Harry Potter. I don't necessarily equate that with Halloween, um, but it is one of those movies that start to like pop up in your um, you know your your watch lists and your TV guides this time of year all the way through January so it's it's definitely a cold weather kind of movie I know not everybody is having cold weather right now um, but some of you are so you definitely can relate to this um, but 
sorry brain brain just went <laughs> the color of the ocean do special yeah the color blue is just so darn pretty it really really is and I feel like it's such an easy color to work with so yeah sorry that my train of thought just completely got derailed I was looking over here at the weekly deals and wanted to kind of like segue into that and it just did not happen so i i definitely do have some housekeeping I actually have a couple of things to talk about so before we get to the weekly deals um i i do want to mention that yes the project for the um the lion that I did last week is available on the Jesse James Speeds blog. And you guys definitely sign up for the newsletter. If you've not signed up for the newsletter, um, I, I definitely recommend doing that because that's gonna keep you up to date with number one, all of the sales, all of the weekly deals, all of uh, you know when news breaks and new collections are on the horizon, you're gonna get that information first, but you're also gonna get a link to all of the projects. So you'll know firsthand when there is a brand new project, maybe it's a project that you missed and you're gonna get a link just directly directly to it so um, sign up for the newsletter you definitely won't um, you won't regret it you're gonna get some deals exclusive to the newsletter so definitely definitely do that Susie says it's still a hundred degrees plus there oh I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm so so sorry the temperature is very slowly coming down here um, you know we've had it's starting to get a little cooler at night which is a good sign so uh, I'm I'm hopeful that we're gonna get some um, some nicer weather you know but like I said this whole collection this the Harry Potter the books and the movies it all just kind of reminds me of this time of year not necessarily Halloween but it does remind me of um, you know a fall and winter you know, there are a lot of winter um, situations if you will in the in the books and the movies so just kind of good fit for this time of year. All right, so what else did I wanna tell you? I wanted to tell you, D, you sign up on the site? Yes, you absolutely do. So if you will go to the website and you'll go to jessiejamespeeds.com and scroll, scroll all the way down to the bottom, um, there is a sign up box that says sign up for 30% off weekly deals and so much more and that is the absolute truth. It is so much more. You will not miss a project, you will not miss a deal. It's definitely, definitely worth the couple of seconds it takes just to enter your email and hit click you know just click okay so um, don't miss out on that second thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is that in case you missed it over the weekend the maker mysteries uh, episode one was released on Saturday night and that is an exclusive uh, project to me, myself, and Jesse James Speeds. That took place over on my YouTube channel, but there is a link and all of the information that you want, if you want to get to that, from the Jesse James Speeds blog as well. So there's a, there's so much information. There's a wealth of information that you are gonna get from the Jesse James Speeds website. So don't just go there and shop for beads. Yes, we want you to shop for beads, but take a look around and see what else there is, because the blog, that's where all the projects are, right? If you need some inspiration, that's gonna be the great that's going to be a great place to go and grab some inspiration and see projects from like years back so there's everything is still there nothing is gone you can go all the way back you can see some of some of Neelay's old projects just really really super cool so definitely take advantage of that and like I said you will see that there is a blog post about the maker mystery series where we are featuring on Saturdays um, where there is a maker mystery uh, well I don't know there may be a a feature for a local artist or not local I'm sorry a, a small business every Saturday so for the maker mystery series I I teamed up with the lipstick ranch and if you are interested in getting that bead mix or any of the new lipstick ranch pendants that are on the site those are some of the first things that come up when you go to the Jesse James beads website so definitely check that out okay the bead mix is there it comes with a lipstick ranch pendant the bead mix is gorgeous there are some Dakota stones in it it is really really beautiful and then there are let's see one two three more lipstick ranch pendants that come up right after that so you have um, got to go check that out, all right? Don't miss out on that. All right, now, last but not least, we are talking about the weekly deals because that changes every single week. For those of you who are new, you may not be aware of this, but Jesse James Beads has deals every single week and they rotate on Mondays. So the weekly deals for this week that will end this time next Monday, <laughs> well, a little bit earlier, but you know what I mean, on Monday. Um, so for this week, you're getting 
20% off red, orange, yellow, and brown, and the code is STEP INTO FALL. There are no spaces there, okay? And that is um, good on a $49 minimum cart, and this does not include the School of Magic, okay? So don't get frustrated when you add the School of Magic and you can't get the discount on that one because it's brand new, right? Um, but everything else, everything else is there. So um, anything red, orange, yellow, and brown, and that covers like a lot. <laughs> Just so you know, that covers a lot. That covers a lot. All right, next but not least, next but not least, what? What am I even saying tonight? It definitely is a Monday. <laughs> next <laughs> weekly deal is buy three, get one free on check glass beads. And the code for that is sparkle check. Again, no spaces in that. So definitely want to check that one out as well. Get it? Check it out. Yeah, you want to check out the check glass beads. So I, I'm a huge, huge fan of check glass beads. I have a huge collection of check glass beads that I have, I've picked up in my journeys the entire, you know, expanse of my career. But I've got to tell you that the Jesse James beads, check glass beads, the quality is above and beyond. So if you're looking for check glass beads, this is, you know, this is the place and this is the deal. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, and now I can say last but not least, not next but not least, like what, what was that? <laughs> uh, you can get two times the loyalty points on bead mixes and there is no code needed for this. All right, so loyalty points, you guys, that's, you gotta be part of the love club. So we were talking about how the Jesse James Beads website has so many features and so many things that are going on. This is one of the things that you cannot miss, okay? So down in the corner is a little pink, little pop-up thing that says the love club click on that if you're going to go over to the site and you're going to sign up for the newsletter then sign up for the love club as well okay because you can earn points by shopping on the site and who doesn't love that and then you can take your points and turn those into more beads right that i mean it doesn't even get any better than that so you can redeem your points for your rewards, you can get um, vouchers that are the equivalent of money that then you can spend on your beads. So sign up for that. I mean, who doesn't love to get a deal when you're shopping, right? So sign up for the newsletter. Don't miss any of the deals. Sign up for the Love Club. Get double the points. You don't even have to use a code for that. That's just going to happen instantaneously for you as you're shopping on bead mixes. And then mix in one of the other codes, but only one because you can't combine the other codes. You can't combine the codes together, but you get it. You get it. So Definitely take advantage of that. I love it when there is two times the um, the love love points or the yeah the loyalty points. My bad, sorry. <laughs> it's the love club. So, all right, a lot, right? That's a lot. Like Mondays are always a big deal because we're gearing up for the whole week. So I always have a ton of information for you guys. So that's what's happening. And a lot has happened between Friday and now. We just had to catch you all up and get you caught up on the weekly deals. So now you know what those are. All right, now, without further ado, we can talk about the project. So we are putting together a pair of earrings that, this is a drop style earring, and some of you probably saw the teaser pic of these um, posted on Facebook. So this is a pair of drop style earrings. I'm gonna give you a little, a little pick, a little sneak peek, if you will. <laughs> This is the one that's already made. We're gonna to put together the one that goes with this. Um, and so it's a drop style earring. We've actually done drop style earrings several times before. In fact, we've made some earrings that look very, very similar to this. However, the technique that we are actually gonna do down here on the bottom is something that we haven't ever done before. And it's one of those kind of techniques that you can take this and turn it into a million different things once you see how easy it is. Um, so that's what I'm really, really hoping that you will do with this because you don't have to use this just on earrings. You can use this on um, bangle bracelets. You can use it in necklace components. And it's just a really cool, um, kind of an easy cheat to um, make it look very like, not necessarily very expensive or anything like that. It just, it looks complicated and is totally not. It's super, super easy. Anybody can do this one. And I love it when I can share that kind of thing with you. So that's what we've got going on. We're gonna be using the artistic wire mandrel tool and the small bell making pliers and then just your regular tools. So let's get down to it. I'm gonna show you some beads and we're gonna make some earrings, shall we? All right, guys. So take a little look-see. Like I said, we're not gonna use this strand, but it's still worth 
still worth looking at because it's just so darn pretty, right? I love it. And let me tell you something that I noticed about these strands that is, that is something that I don't know if you guys are noticing it or not, but it's the amount of boho beads that are happening here, okay? So normally you get a Jesse James bead strand and there's like maybe two or three of the bohos, right? And we covet those because we love them so, so much. But you guys, we're getting like really spoiled with these because there is one, two, three, four, five bohos in this strand. Five, that's unheard of completely unheard of and they're so stinking pretty i say that so often stinking pretty but i mean i just it's because i can't think of other things <laughs> sometimes words they're just not enough words to describe how pretty right and i i just love blue it's such an easy color to work with too so that's this strand and i'm gonna move on and show you guys you know what i want to show you the silver silk too um I don't have the soft flex wire that goes with this, but it's really, really pretty as well. But I do have the silver silk, so I wanted to show it to you because look at that. <laughs> I mean, do I even need to tell you why you need to look at that? So pretty. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. The whole collection, the whole blue collection here just really is such a calming. That must be why I like blue so much. All right, so this is the mix. Let me get a little bowl here. And the mix is missing a few beads because I am using some of them. And I know you guys have seen these before, but for those of you who are new, first and foremost, welcome in. And <laughs> those of you who are not new, it doesn't hurt to see them again, right? So like I said, there's some of the beads are missing from here because I've pulled them out for the um, for the finished earring and we're gonna pull some more out. But I do want to show you these mother of pearl shell beads. These guys are drilled. I saw somebody ask, do they have a hole? Yes, they do. They are drilled this direction, at least on these guys, they're drilled this direction, okay? And these are custom created for Jesse James beads. So you're not gonna find a strand of these somewhere. You're not gonna be at a bead shop or a box store and find these. These are custom created just for Jesse James beads and I gotta tell you there are these that match every single house of the the magic houses right um, and and I can't pick a favorite I can't they're all so darn cool and of course there's another boho in here there was actually two so we're actually getting seven total bohos if you get the entire like bundle the wise raven bundle so that's pretty darn good um, the little charms in here as well. So there's a lot, a lot going on, you guys. There are bead caps. And these are just the extra things. Like that doesn't even include the beads and the tassels and everything else. So yeah, it's so hard to pick which ones are the are my favorites. I know you guys are having a hard time as well. <laughs> Lucky for you, you can get the whole collection and you don't have to choose, right? <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the earrings. So what you're gonna need, this is a very minimum amount of things for this. So you're gonna need a four and a half inch piece of 18 gauge wire, okay? And that's not a lot. I'm using silver and I'm using the uh, German style wire for this. I definitely recommend using it. We are gonna work hard in this as well, but the 18 is just a little bit more st sturdy and it's really good for making components. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our small bell making pliers and we're gonna turn a loop on either end. You guys, we've made, we've made this teardrop shape a couple of times. So this part shouldn't be new to you at all. Um, but we are going to just use the small mandrel portion of the small bell making pliers and we're just going to turn a loop here if you don't have the small bell making pliers you can use your round nose pliers but you want your loops to be consistent so definitely do the loops in the exact same place Ramona says can't wait to see what you do with the yellow color I've been working on it all day long and I've changed my mind like six times so I can't wait to see what I do with yellow either 
I can't decide exactly what it is that I want that yellow collection to be. I'm really feeling a necklace, but I don't know. I don't know. I keep changing my mind. It'll be a surprise for all of us. All right, so I've got loops on either end here, and I use the bell making pliers because I want those loops to be consistent because that will throw the measurement off if they're not the same size. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, now we're going to use the mandrel tool to create our teardrop shape. And so we are going to put, I think I'm one, two, three. I believe it's the third one up. If it's not, we're going to change it. <laughs> Actually, you know what? It's not the third one up. It's the second one. I have to think about it a second. Okay, so it's the second step up. It's not the third one. The third one makes it just a little bit more elongated, and I like it a little bit fatter and shorter. So just keep that in mind, because you could do this in any, any one of these, right? But it's going to kind of change the shape of the teardrop a little bit. So I've placed that wire on the section of the mandrel where I want it. I'm holding it down with my thumb, and then I'm just going to go ahead and bend the wire around the mandrel just kind of bring those two loops together right and then take it off of the tool and we've got our little teardrop shape however my loops are in the in the wrong place i want those loops to be facing to the back so that when i'm looking at the component straight on you don't see those so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in with my chain nose pliers and I am going to grab the loop and very, very gently, I'm just going to give it a turn so that it is facing the direction that I want it to be facing, okay? So I turned one, now I'm gonna turn the other one as well. And you just wanna be gentle. Okay. So now when you're looking at it straight on, you don't really see the loops. That's exactly what we want, okay? Now, I am gonna put this on the block and I'm going to use my nylon hammer to work hard in this. We're using the nylon hammer on the block instead of anything else because I don't wanna change the structure of the wire. This is a round wire and I want it to remain a round wire. So when I use the nylon hammer, all I'm doing is work hardening. I'm not actually flattening the wire or changing its shape in any way, okay? And you wanna be sure that you do both sides, okay? And you'll notice, see how my loops are hanging off the edge? Because I wanna be sure that I can lay that component nice and flat. Thank you, Beverly and Ramona, you are so sweet. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. All right, so it doesn't take a lot of work hardening, but you do want to give it some, just because the 18 gauge wire is still a little on the thin side. Um, it's nice and sturdy for jump rings and components, but only if you work harden it. Wanda says, this is where I work harden a finger. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I have work hardened many a finger in my day. <laughs> All right. So now we have our component and the next thing that we need is about 24 inches of 24 gauge wire. And this is where things get a little bit different, okay? Because we've not ever done it like this before. We have wire wrapped to a component um, several, several different ways. This is one we've never done. And it is, it's a cool one because you can use this as kind of a cheat for a lot of other things, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the wire across the component, start on whichever side you're comfortable with, okay? And you wanna give yourself about an inch and a half of a tail here, and then you just want to anchor the wire to the component with about four or five wraps, which is more than we normally do. We normally just do about three, but I want a good little section of wire wraps here, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a few, okay? I've done a, I've done a lot there. It's probably more like six, I don't know. And I'm gonna use my cutter tool to come in and trim that off. All right, so we've got the wire anchored, and now what I want is I want to kind of pull my 24 gauge wire out to the side. 
See how I've got it out to the side here? Now normally this is what we would do, okay? Just showing you what we've done in the past. We would take a bead, we would drop a bead down, and then we would wrap it, right? We would go behind just like that and wrap. We're not doing that, okay? I'm gonna show you something completely different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and load up on our 24 gauge wire all of the beads that we want to go on the bottom. So I'm gonna thread on one of these little star cut black beads. Okay, I'm gonna thread on one of these kind of iridescent blue, green, purple beads. Um, one of the check glass beads. One of these beautiful rondelles. A check glass, another one of those iridescent, has that beautiful color shift, and then another one of the black beads. All right, now we're going to drop all of those down, right? Instead of doing one bead at a time, we're doing all of them at the same time. And now what I want to do is I want to curve all of those beads around the same curve and you can slide it. See how I'm, I'm kind of sliding that wire wrap? You can slide that around until you get your beads in the spot where you want them. Okay. So they're going at an arch right underneath if I turned it this direction right it's it's over the top since I've got my my component turning this direction but um, you want that arch you want that 24 gauge wire and all those beads to make a nice arch not sitting on top of but next to okay next to the component now holding all of that in place we want to take the wire and we want to wire wrap our end Okay, and again, we want to go around five or six times, whatever makes you happy. Okay, just want it to kind of match the other side. And it may have wiggled. Now see what's happened. I've wiggled it and some room has kind of made its way in there. So now I want to kind of slide it back. At this point, we can still really adjust it. Once we start wrapping in between the beads, we're not gonna be able to adjust it anymore. So definitely do your placing of where you want those to sit right now. This is your last chance, right? Last chance to put everything where it goes. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wire and we're gonna go back the other direction, wrapping over the wraps that we just made, right? And now I'm going to wrap between every single bead. Okay, so I'm going to wrap between those two and around the component. I'm grabbing that component as I go, wrapping between the next two and around the component, between the next and the component, the next and the component. So I'm going all the way around, okay, till I get over here to the other side where our wire wraps are. I'm going to wrap around those once or twice. Okay, and now I'm gonna go back the other direction. Okay, this time I'm kinda coming from the back, but I'm wrapping in the exact same places. And if you've got 24 inches of your 24 gauge wire, you've got enough of this to do this about three times, okay? And it's gonna look the same on the front and on the back you're going to have a crisscross actually you're, it does it isn't going to look the same now that i've kind of looked at it it's going to have a crisscross on one side and one side it won't really have a crisscross so if you like the crisscross side better than the other side you can flip your um your loops around okay just keep that in mind but i'm going back the other way i've got just enough Wanda says she loves this. I'm glad. This is such a cool cheat to wire wrapping and you don't have to be really good at wire wrapping to do this. That's what makes this such an awesome little technique. I don't know why I waited so long to show it to you guys because it's, it's a cool one. All right, so I've wrapped around 
my wire wraps a couple of times and you can see my little wire wraps on either side are chunky monkey because we've gone over those a few times, right? We wrapped around those a couple of times and then I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and trim off. All right, now you've got this really cool wire wrap section on the bottom of your earring and it was so easy you guys it was so easy you need this technique in your life right Paula says great technique for wire I know Carolyn says so you do so you did three wraps I did three wraps but you know what if you had more wire you could do more this looks pretty before it starts to get kind of before the wire becomes overwhelming you can do up to five okay after five you're really starting to crowd your beads out but you can do three to five wraps between your beads so go back and forth three to five times and it still looks good so anywhere in there you're going to find the sweet spot that you really really like now imagine for just a second okay because we're doing this in earring form but i always want to give you guys a technique that is something that you can translate into other things right so imagine just for a moment that instead of doing a teardrop component for an earring which we're doing because that's just easy right and earrings are awesome what if instead of having a four and a half inch piece of your 18 gauge wire what if you bumped that up to a let's say eight inch piece of 16 gauge wire and you preloaded you did the exact same thing okay you started at the end you wrapped around with your 24 gauge wire or your 26 gauge whichever one i wouldn't go any thicker than the 22 um, but you go around about you know five or six times fill up the entire length of the bracelet with the bead pattern that you want and then lay it next to in fact I've got extra pieces of wire here we're just gonna pretend for a second so this is not 24 gauge wire but we're gonna pretend so it would work the exact same way on a straight piece of wire is what I'm getting at <laughs> so this is my bracelet right this is the wire i'm going to feed on all of the beads and then i'm going to lay them down right next to that so they're sitting next to the component all the beads are on this one this one is empty wire wrap down here on the end and then wrap all the way back through right and you've done an entire bangle bracelet of beads and you didn't wire wrap each individual bead you only you you thread on one pattern and then wrapped with one piece of wire right and then went back the other direction now clearly it's going to take you guys a little bit more wire than 24 inches to do the whole length of a bracelet but you can very easily do an entire bracelet and then you just want to kind of form the bracelet into a bangle shape and then you can put a clasp on it or not just depending on how um, sturdy it is because clearly the more wrapping you do the thicker and the more sturdy the entire piece is going to become so you may not need you may not need a clasp it may work as a bangle just like it is otherwise you could just pop a you know pop up a, a clasp on the end of it and you've got a bangle bracelet that probably took you all of about i don't know 10 15 minutes depending on whether you've laid out your pattern ahead of time or not right easy easy cheat love it love it love it now one other thing you can do which i also really love is to do the same kind of curved shape so you would definitely use the wire mandrel to do this the little curved shapes but instead of having this section of wire here on either side to make up your earring you would do your your loop right here and right here so you've just got this short piece just like this with loops on either end now imagine four or five of these in a row on a necklace and you can actually string beads in between them right through here right in that section or you could just have chain going from here to here another one with chain going here to here so yeah I've shown you just one little thing but this is one of those things that you guys could turn into a million bazillion different things and it's so easy to do and I feel like this time of year when we're trying to scramble together things for craft booths and craft fairs and selling online or making gifts for the upcoming holidays don't make it hard on yourself this is a really cool easy easy quick thing that you can do 
in a million different ways, right? You can turn it into a million different things. We just so happen to be turning ours into earrings. All right, so now we are going to add our little boho to this. And again, this takes minimum, minimum things here. I've got two six millimeter jump rings, my ear wire and a four millimeter jump ring. Um, I'm gonna need a piece of 22 gauge wire so that we can make our own wrapped head pin. That's what we're gonna do right now. And we're gonna hang the boho from the center and we're gonna call it a day, you guys. And hopefully I've given you something really super cool to take and run with. That's always my hope. All right, so I've got about a four and a half inch piece of 22 gauge wire here. We're gonna make our own knotted head pin. You guys have seen us, we do this a lot, right? So I've got the end of the wire right at the very tip of my round nose pliers. I'm gonna roll that around the tip of the pliers once and I'm gonna roll it around a second time and I'm gonna stop where I see that cut on the wire. Okay, now before I take this off, I'm gonna bend this, thank you Dawn, thank you Melanie. I'm gonna bend this wire out this direction, okay, and take it off of the round nose pliers. Okay, now I'm gonna take the wire end and I'm gonna stick it back through those two loops, our little coil that we made, and I'm gonna come in with my nylon jaw pliers and I'm grabbing that wire right next to those two loops around, right? Okay, don't want there to be any extra space there. And I'm gonna grab the tail end of the wire and pull. And as I pull, we've created this cute little knot in the bottom of our wire. You're so welcome, Steph. And we've made ourselves a little head pin, right? Easy peasy pumpkin squeezy. Favorite, favorite trick. And I really like it because even even though it is a knot, it's really pretty, but it's a little bit chunkier than your regular head pin. So for beads that have a little bit larger hole, this is the perfect answer to that, right? And it just kind of disappears. It's not like, hey, look at that big knot of wire. I mean, it really just kind of disappears. All right, so now we're gonna do a wrapped loop here and I'm actually gonna double this one up and I'm gonna grab the wire where it is exiting the bead with my chain nose pliers and give it a bend. I'm gonna give this one the, the slouchy socks treatment, okay? So I'm grabbing the wire now with my round nose pliers so that the wire is running between the barrel of the pliers. And I'm gonna go up and over. The top barrel of the pliers didn't move the pliers, just the wire. And now I gotta roll the pliers out of the way so that I can take the wire over to the other side, okay? I'm gonna switch hands and I'm going to wire wrap in that space. I'm gonna wire wrap about three and a half-ish times. But I do have some extra wire here, so I'm gonna do the slouchy sock and I'm gonna go right back up. So my wrap started at the loop and went down to the bead. Now I'm gonna wrap back up. So I'm going from the, top, from the top of the bead to the loop again, and I'm just going to cover up the wraps that I already made. This just kind of thickens up that wire wrapped section. Okay, and then I'm gonna come with my cutter tool and trim that off. You guys don't have to do the, that whole slouchy sock. That's just kind of what it reminds me of. Um, you don't have to do that part if you don't want to, but a lot of times when I have a bead and it is a little bit more of a substantial bead, this one definitely is, I feel like that little twiggly wire wrap at the top just looked kind of unbalanced. So when I feel that way, I will double up my wire wraps just to kind of make it feel more balanced. But it, that's just a personal choice and it isn't, it isn't function, it's just, it's just personal preference. And I don't always do it. Okay, so now we're gonna put this together. This part is super easy as well. We're just using uh, a couple of things here. So I've got a four millimeter jump ring that is connecting our, our boho bead to our six millimeter jump ring and that is the distance, right? This is just the hanging portion here. And so let's go ahead and do that. Actually, let's grab the four millimeter. Okay, so we're gonna grab the four millimeter bead and I'm sorry, it's not a bead, it's a jump ring. <laughs> I'm telling you, I got Monday brain, Monday brain. All right, so I've thread on the six millimeter jump ring and now I'm gonna thread on my boho bead and I'm gonna close that back. And now we're ready to 
put the entire earring together. The little jump ring section here is just just for length so that our bead kind of dangles in the spot that I want it to. That part can be adjusted as well. You can use whichever, you know, um, jump ring configuration you want. You can use a small little piece of chain just so that the bead hangs wherever it is that you feel like it looks the best, okay? Now I'm going to open a six millimeter jump ring and I'm going to hook that to the loop on one side. I'm going to hook on the six millimeter jump ring where my bead is and I'm going to hook that to the other loop on the other side and I'm going to close that jump ring. All right now the only thing left we have to add is our ear wire and our earrings are complete. And even though we only did an earring I feel like I've kind of given you guys an earring, a bracelet, and a necklace, <laughs> right? I've given you the ideas for all three of those things in one, one quick little, little project here. And it's not a dud by any means. Like these are super cool earrings, right? I love it. I'm using some of the cool, coolest of the cool beads, right? And honestly, any of the beads from the mix would look really awesome on these earrings, but I kind of like that I started with the larger beads in the center, and then as I went out, I used smaller beads, but you could use any combination of the beads from this mix, and it would be really, really awesome. And if you didn't want to use the boho in the center, you definitely could use something else. One of these guys would look really beautiful in the center as well, or one of the dyed agate beads in the center. That would be gorgeous. So, you know, you guys could could recreate this exact same project with different beads and it would it would turn out amazingly, right? And so easy, right? I feel like the hardest part of the whole thing is just kind of centering up your little arch section and that just takes patience and then it's done, right? It's done. You just lock it into place and you're good to go. Do your little wire wrapping doodle doos. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Leslie. I'm glad you liked this project, guys. I really, I really think that it was, it's a really cool technique that can be used in so many different ways. So I'm glad you guys like it. I'm going to turn you around and we're going to try these on and then I'm going to let you guys go for the evening and hopefully I've given you some inspiration. Seems so doable. Yay! That's what, that's my goal, friends. That is the goal. I don't want jewelry to seem hard. I don't want you guys to look at things that I do and be like, ah, oh, I could never do that. No, no, no. You totally can do this. <laughs> Paula, you can do the doodle doos. All right, so I'm going to pop these off and put these on because they're just so darn cool. It's funny, I can put in my left earring with no problem. But a lot of times the right gives me a fit. So <laughs> thank you guys. You guys are so sweet. Robin says, I'm going to practice these tonight. You're going to love it because it is such a cool cheat, such a cool cheat that you can, you can use in so many different ways. I think that once you get the hang of it, you're going to be like, oh, what can I do this to? <laughs> Right, kind of like the kind of like that herringbone technique that some of you are obsessed with. This is another one of those that you can obsess over because it's so darn easy, but it can be used in so many different ways. And I got to tell you, uh, an entire bracelet like this, it's so easy. Like bangle bracelets can either be one of those things that you either can do with your eyes closed or you really really struggle with. That's always been me. I have always struggled with bangle bracelets. I don't know why. It shouldn't be hard, right? That seems easy enough, but for whatever reason, I've always had a really hard time with the with the bangle bracelet. This is my answer to the bangle bracelet because you can do that on that straight piece of wire, wrap, wrap all your beads on there and then just turn it into the shape that you want it. Use a mandrel, use a glass, use whatever you've got to make that shape and boom, you're done, right? And you've got a gorgeous bracelet. So. All right. Thank you guys so, so much. I'm glad that you are loving this project. I cannot wait to see what you guys do with it. So definitely post your pictures of whatever you create, right? Post it over on the secret stash so that we can share the inspiration and their creativity with everyone. Don't forget to sign up for the mailing list so that you can always be in the know. If you happen to miss a, pro a project like tonight's, which you're not. If you're here, you're hearing me, then you're you're here, obviously. But if you missed a project, you would be able to go straight to it with a link sent to your email. You will never miss a project and never miss a deal. So 
All right, guys, that is it. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the night. I will see you guys. Let's see. You guys can catch me on Dress It Up on Wednesday at 1 p.m. And then you can catch me again right here at on Jesse James V's at 11 a.m. Eastern time. All the times I give you are Eastern, so you kind of have to do, if you live, you guys know. <laughs> it's all Eastern time. Um, you guys, if you want to catch me again on Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time. I'll have another project for you. I am using the um, the yellow. I really wish I could remember what it is called. I'm so, so sorry. Let me look because I, I don't want to, I don't want to mess this one up. I'm using loyal badger. I knew it was a badger. I just didn't know what descriptive word went with it. So I'm going to be using loyal badger on Thursday and um, it'll be a surprise for all of us. So <laughs> looking forward to that one. Can't wait to see you guys again this week. Have a great Monday and a great start to your week and I will see you guys again soon. Bye guys.